Eyewitness News is coming up next. He was known as a godfather. He murdered on the, he was murdered on the streets of Midtown Manhattan tonight. His name Paul Castellano, the alleged mafia strongman, killed by three men wearing trench coats and firing automatic weapons at close range. Castellano's bodyguard driver was also killed in the attack. The witnesses say the killer simply walked away and got into a car and then disappeared. Castellano was being tried on federal racketeering charges. We had But he was arrested. The police questioned him for hours, yet Paul wouldn't rat on his partners in crime. He served three months in jail. When he got out, the story made the rounds about how Paul had kept his mouth shut and he became a hero among the thugs in his neighborhood. He was noticed by made men in the mob. With his connection to the Mangano family through his cousin Carlo, young Paul was initiated into La Cosa Nostra. When he was 22, Paul took after Carlo in another way. He used marriage to solidify his ties to organized crime. He married a distant cousin of his, who just happened to be Carlo's sister-in-law. Her name, Nina Mano. She was the, the typical Italian lady. Um, you walked into her house, she had a house dress on. She was talking about what she was going to make that night for dinner. Very simple lady. Paul and Nina had four children, three sons and a daughter. While Paul had joined the mafia, he didn't give up his... He was the mob's version of little Lord Fauntleroy. I mean, you know, he came all dressed up neat and clean. He didn't have to get his hands dirty or bloody. And this empire was then given to him, given unto him as this great gift, where guys who had been in the trenches, robbing and stealing and killing and hijacking and everything, you know, for years said, hey, what about me? Among the 800 or so gangsters who now made up the Gambino crime family, the more popular candidate to take over after Carlo was his second-in-command, or underboss, Neil Della Croce. Della Croce operated out of the Ravenite Social Club in Little Italy and ran the blue-collar faction of the family. Crimes like extortion, gambling, loan sharking, and whenever necessary, murder. Della Croce, one of the scariest individuals I've ever met in my life. Della Croce's eyes were like... Uh, like he didn't have any eyes. You ever see that Children of the Damned? Like his eyes were so blue that they weren't even there. It was like looking right through him. Della Croce was the epitome of the Mafia's old school. He was a soldier who believed in the tradition of unquestioning loyalty. When he was passed over for the top job, he accepted his fate quietly, even if he was bitterly disappointed. Some of Della Croce's thugs, including the ambitious John Gotti, did not accept the decision so lightly. Gotti was an upstart. Gotti was like, what do you mean, so it shall be? You know, what about you? You were number two, you were in line. But the new boss was no fool. He knew the blue-collar guys resented him, so he made peace with Della Croce and his gang by letting them control and profit from the street rackets they were running. Big Paulie looked down his nose at such activities and at men like John Gotti in their polyester suits. He preferred to dress like a banker and read the Wall Street Journal. He thought of the Gambino crime family as a corporate entity. 25, 1985, Castellana was arrested along with the bosses of all of New York's other crime families. It was the biggest mob bust in history. 
tasks. The bosses, who all sat on the mob's board of directors, or commission, were charged with racketeering in connection with shaking down New York building companies. Another big crime family, the Gambinos, would also cash in. Their boss, Paul Castellano, was gunned down last December, but business goes on as usual under new leader John Gotti, now awaiting trial on racketeering charges. Paul, 13 years younger than his cousin Carlo, was born in Brooklyn in 1915. His father, a butcher, ran numbers for mob control bookies. Paul dropped out of school in the eighth grade. He learned to be a meat cutter and began helping his father in the numbers racket. Paul was attracted to a life in the mafia, not out of any personal taste for violence, but out of greed. There was no real reason why he had to have a life of crime. He grew up in a middle class, two laboring class Italian neighborhood uh, where there was not a great deal of crime. That was partly what his relative did and, uh, and it was a chance to make more money. <laughs> 